Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to run through some of the basics of setting up and using the Prover 9 Theorem Prover. Um, so obviously to begin with we need to download and install the software. Um, this link is somewhere in the course materials but obviously you can also just google it. In this video I'm going to run through installing and using the GUI, so um, I'll download that but maybe in another um, video I will look at using the command line. Um, so I'm on Linux, so I'll download this. It's a bit easier to install if you're on Windows or a Mac. Come on. Save that there. Extract this. Um, so you'll need to run it with Python 2. Okay, so I'm getting this error. Um, it has mentioned that this is an issue with 64-bit systems, but there's an easy fix. I think you just need to um, edit this file. Let's open it with that. Okay. Um, just add this line here and now it should run. Okay, great. Um, so this is the user interface. Here you write your assumptions and here you write your goals. So for example if you want to say something like if it's raining then it's wet um, and let's say that it's raining and you want to prove that it's wet. Um, so to run the proof you just click start. Um, so it's output as a proof here. Um, if you want to save that you just click save as. Um, if we close it and we want to look at it again just click show and go to the proof. Um, a couple of things to note with the proof. Um, so usually you will want uh, all your assumptions to have been used in general um, and you want the goal to be used so that's these are quite easy things you can check in the proof um, so for example if um, if you've written something potentially you've written something wrong and you've written um, you've made you've made a contradiction in your assumptions. So from what I've written here um, we can essentially prove anything because raining and not raining gives us a contradiction. So when I run this we should see... Okay so if you see a proof like this that doesn't have a goal and you've probably done something wrong somewhere um, and you've got a contradiction in your assumptions. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to this nice example. Right, so if, um, so in terms of syntax and semantics, some in particular with the syntax, something you can do is click this well formed button. This will check whether your what you've written is well formed. So these bits are good. If I get rid of the full stop, it's going to tell me something's wrong. You can also just run the proof. Um, and it'll tell you, tell you there's an error. It can just be a bit quicker to sometimes to check if it's well formed. Okay. Um, so with regards to syntax and how you should write stuff, um, the the end of each statement should have a full stop, as I've just shown. Otherwise, you'll get some errors. Um, the logical connectives you have are this arrow me its implication so this statement is saying if it's raining then it's wet if you want a conjunction so and it's an ampersand so this is saying um, it's raining and it's wet uh, disjunction is this line this says it's raining or it's wet then negation is just a dash Oops. Um, so this is saying it's raining or it's not wet um, just a thing to note with negation is that 
uh, you need to think about where you want to put parentheses. So yeah, let's essentially do the negation first. So this statement is now saying it's not raining or it's wet. So this statement is true um, when it's raining and it's wet. Um, which and this statement is different if you put parentheses in. This is saying it's it's not the case that it's raining or wet. So this is the same as saying it's not raining and it's not wet. Okay. So one more thing. I mean, yeah, one more thing really to note is. Um, just to be careful with how you name your constants and propositions. So, proven nine's default rule for distinguishing free variables from constants is that free variables start with a lowercase u through z. So, letters, just be careful with letters at the end of the alphabet, basically. Um, so, if we go back to the original example, so if it's raining, then it's wet. Um, and we've seen that we get a proof for this. If I change this to a lowercase w and then try and prove it, it says exhausted. So Proven9 th thinks this should be a free variable, so it's confusing it. Um, similarly, if we look at another example, so let's say red w, let's use some predicates, um, and what we want to Prove um, okay, so this is saying we're assuming that something, an object W is red, and we want to prove that an object C is red. We shouldn't be able to prove this, right? Okay, so we can't prove that. Um, if we change this to W, now this is an open formula with a free variable, and we get a proof. Um, generally pretty good to use comments, especially um, I think on the longer, more difficult questions um, to give you an idea of what you've done and what you should be writing. So comments are just with a percentage sign and can help you keep track of what you're writing. So if we write something like all x, red x, so let's say our domain is apples, Comment just saying all oh, apples are red. Okay, I think that about covers it. Um, I hope you found this helpful and get in touch if you have any questions.